Good morning, Ecclesia. Good morning, saints of God. I love greeting you every morning in the name that's above all names. That is the name of Jesus. There's no other name that we can be saved, delivered, healed, or set free other than the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Praise God. Well, hey, we're down to the last part of our, our session with uh, Anderson Williams, praise God, in our series, uh, Ecclesia Unscripted. And I believe this has been a powerful time uh, of impartation through the conversation uh, that we have had this last week. Now, when we finished the last episode, when it closed out, I was asking Anderson about the initiatives that he is doing. And uh, we're going to pick it up today at that point. Um, I love what he had to say about that. In fact, I was so blessed by it because much of what he said he would do is very similar to what's in my heart to do. Uh, from my mandate out of Isaiah 45, 13, praise God. I just, I'm thanking God for what he's doing, even out of Isaiah 61, to raise up a people who will build, raise up and repair the old ways. So God is doing the same thing through so many around the earth. So let's pick up uh, today's conversation and I'll come back at the end with some closing remarks. Praise God. My own personal, spiritual, and relational orbit is growing bigger and wider, and that to me is very, very satisfying and very rewarding. Hey Amen. Well, that's a good segue to get into uh, maybe some of the initiatives that you were doing. I mean, uh, prior to this, uh, you were talking to the group you said in Paris. Uh, well, I just came off a call with a group in Paris. Um, the thing is, I could be extremely busy. Um, a couple of years ago. I found myself in over 90 something nations within the space of within the space of about 11 or 12 months, man. I've been going and going and going and going. But um, over the last couple, over the last year or so, as if I no longer have this desire to run up and down the nations like a mad crazy person, you know. <laughs> I've gone to the point where I, I have no th that that thing is as though God has yanked that out of my heart. Mm -hmm. And I see the urgent need just to uh, stay put and build and start to almost like create an entity that reflects or resembles what I believe God wants in the earth. Um, that is not an easy exercise uh, because you're still dealing with people who have um, ambitions of their own. There are still people who would want to see things done the way they would like to see it done. And so I started investing in building something. And I've been mean, guys just kind of come and go and disappeared on me in the whole in the whole process. But I really feel I, I am one of those. I've learned how to deal with disappointments and deal with betrayal. I've done it. It's been like a part of me all my life. So, but we're building now, and um, I'm still doing a lot in the nations. I have stuff happening in um, in Liberia. Still investing significantly in Liberia. We have a lot of operations across Europe. Um, God has opened up significant areas inside of uh, inside of West Africa, and those things are opening up more and more and more and more. Um, down in Latin America and uh, in Cuba, things are opening up. But um, right now, if I'm to have my way, I would really just like to concentrate on, a, on, on, on specific areas. No, one is build a prototype, something yes. that really reflects a lot of what I have discovered in God. Uh, that's the one. Secondly, I'm putting a significant amount of work into my books. I'm trying to get a, 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 a plethora of books out in the shortest possible time. I believe as though God has put a demand on me to start to get content out. Over the last eight years, I've been silent. I've been off the grid, deliberately so. Uh, I describe it as living in a, living in the cave. I've disappeared off the circuit. Um, some people even thought that I was dead uh, several years ago because I was so silent. I did not exist. I was flying be be below the radar, deliberately so. Yeah. All kinds of personal adjustment and transformation. But over the last couple of months, I I I, I hear God almost like insisting that my days of silence are over. And there's a need for a certain level of bold declarations that must be made 
And so people are beginning to see that I am out there. So a lot of stuff is being said that Anderson is, is out there. Now that doesn't move me any which way, but I really believe that it's time for me to, to build, uh, to get some websites out, to build some portals of human transformation out there. To right. Get, to, get my, to get my books written. Um, I'm working on those things to get them out. So that's where I'm at at the moment. My personal concentrated exercise is books to get out there and building a prototype and trying my best to continue to invest in human development and lives. And saints, this is why, you know, working together with uh, with uh, people of kindred spirit, kindred mind is so important because, you know, those of you who know me in this area, you know, that's my heart to build a prototype, you know, even in this region, based on what the Lord has shown me, because what we're what we're finding is that, you know, we, we can go in. Uh, I think Paul said in Second Corinthians, he says, you know, uh, finding a ministry made ready at our hand. In other words, I call mm -hmm. it the Mech Church, you know, mm -hmm. where, you know, you're just going and it said that's what he's given to be built now does not look like uh, what we're used to getting up going to church on Sunday. It is a new uh, paradigm. It's a new shift. It's a new, uh, and which even goes to the, the how leadership is developed. Uh, the solo pastoral concept is, is does not exist. Mm -hmm. uh, and so understanding that, you know, uh, m many pastors uh, obviously don't like the concept of the, of the uh, plurality of elders and I mean, I think you know, there's a couple of pastors who make it a point to say in my presence, you need a pastor, you need a <laughs> church home, you know, well, praise God, you know, praise God for them, you know, uh, but the bottom line, biblically, uh, the Bible teaches that there was a plurality. And so when we start talking about prototypes, it has to reflect not only what scripture is saying, that's the number one thing, but also begin to reflect how God shows it to be meted out in the territory that he's entrusted to us. Right. Uh, I think that's critical. Uh, and then the Bible says when your faith is fulfilled in that territory, you can take it to regions beyond you. Right. Um, you remember the old B movies? I, I, I use this so much. The guys uh, around here, they know what I'm, where I'm going with this. You remember mm -hmm. the old Western movies? Where they show the big Western towns, you know, and then they'll show how they made the movie. And all you see is these big store, these big fronts. Yes, yes, nothing, yeah. nothing behind them. <laughs> I said, unfortunately, a lot of our church systems are like that. You go in, you see all the big, beautiful buildings, but when you go in, they're just props. Right. Just, and that's all they are. They're just simply props. I, in my heart, I said, when people come to this region, I want them to identify and say, that's what I have been seeing in my spirit. That is ecclesia. This is the move of God and, and how it should be looking. This is not church as usual. I'm seeing something that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, and I, I really believe we need to build of substance, uh, build uh, with quality, mm -hmm. and build as accurate as we know how from the word of God. Uh, that, 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 is a, that is a serious exercise, Um because it's a serious exercise, but the hard and fast of it, it is easier said than done. Yes. Primarily because what you see in your own heart and what you are convinced and convicted about, most of the people who sometimes align themselves with you, they just don't see it like that. Yeah. And so other people are seeing a grand opportunity for you to build according to their definition of what success is. And so uh, they are hoping that you would be quick to put together maybe a reverend and a pastor and a this and a that, and maybe have this thing going, have your worship going and all this kind of stuff. But to build the way you are describing it really requires, um, you have to, we have to almost like slow down in order to build fast. Right. Uh, uh, almost like shift people, people's perspective before you start identifying architecture. Right. Because most of these people are not prepared to, to deal with the design that you are presenting to them simply because uh, if left to themselves, they'll be like Moses coming out of Egypt who only saw pyramids of a structure and God had to take him up on the mountain and say, build according to this model, because left right. to you and your Egyptian mindset, 
you will build my purpose according to a pyramid that you've grown accustomed to. And so you almost have to bring people up at a level where they have to divorce themselves from the designs that they've grown accustomed to. Right. So that, that they could really begin to build the ecclesia the way God has ordained it to be built. So yeah. that's, a, that's a big task. And that's why I applaud those who follow uh, individuals like this with, on the local level, like yourself yeah. and uh, even those who are following me, because it takes a heart of a people sometimes to see uh, what they really can't see yet, but they right. know something in their spirit. That, that they're being uh, molded into something that's greater than what they've seen in the oh, past. Yeah. And they're willing to follow you. And that's why, you know, all of us, and I, I think I speak for all of us on this, we're very sensitive to how we handle God's people in this transition. Because mm -hmm. uh, everything that we do is about building them and about getting them to the place uh, where they are functioning as God intended them to function exactly. in the earth and uh, not building little kingdoms where they come in and applaud us, you know, and say that we are all of that in a bag of chips. No, this is about <laughs> building a kingdom yeah. uh, design. Praise God. So uh, beautiful. Final thing here. How would yeah. you describe the season that we're in today? Uh, you, you've seen a lot more around the world. Uh, you've seen, uh, the various countries. In fact, you're originally from what, Trinidad? Yeah, originally, from, yeah, God's country, man, Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought where I was, uh, on earth as it is in Albion, man. <laughs> Listen, man, everybody has the right to be wrong, man, but. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, <I> forgive you. <laughs> let me, let me, um, if I'm to describe what I see, there, there is an enormous sense of instability. Um, Politics is, um, is 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 destabilizing societies all over the world. It's not only an American thing. Um, there's polarization. Is what I it's what I describe almost as a new brand of apartheid. Mm -hmm. It's happening within churches, as well as it's happening within our communities and within our nations. So there's a there's 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 an enormous sense of destabilization. And if I am to to put one word or one scripture to define what I'm seeing is that, listen, whatever can be shaken will be shaken. There is an enormous sense of destabilizing. And um, so so God is almost, not almost, but God is literally uh, building a people with a sense of anti-fragility who can really withstand the prevailing sense of crisis and destabilization and be anchored to truth in an overwhelming environment of uh, of post-truth in an overwhelming environment of uh, misinformation where everybody suddenly believe that they're an expert on a subject simply because they have access to facebook and so um destabilization is what is taking place on every single level uh, but in the middle of all the destabilizing there is a people and Unfortunately, I don't think that they are the people who are very apparent. You know, it's like God came to, or rather Elijah came to God and said, I'm the only one left. And God basically had to say to him, no, it, it may appear that way, but there are 7,000 others who have not bowed their knees to Baal. And the point I'm making is that those 7,000 others, the Bible never told us who they were, never right. identified them by name, but they were within the rank and file of God's army, building out of sight and holding the system of God in, in play and on time. And I think right now, a lot of the very apparent leaders that are in front of our gaze, God is going to at least hold his purpose together, not by them, but by a bunch of unknown, I mean, unheralded guys down in the trenches, keeping their faith together, uh... maintaining a very resolute stance and pushing forward. What I would like to do is connect to those people. I want I want to meet the 7,000 others. I'm not too too concerned about the guys who's out there with the big church and big name. It's the 7,000 others I want to connect to. My heart longs to connect with those like yourself right. because um, I believe that exactly. that is where the purpose of God is maintaining traction, out of sight. 
So it has all of this destabilizing taking place, but it has an out of sight building reality taking place that is holding the purpose of God on time. Because the, de the, the, the destabilizing is not just happening in politics and in economics and inflation and, and trends. Now social media is now basically being compromised because Twitter is in a mess. Facebook has lost over $900 billion or something of the sort. It, 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 I mean, the whole issue in life is being confronted. Right, and right. Of that, the church is also contributing and being shaken as well. Yes. And so in the middle of all the shaking, there is a people that is very stable and holding the purpose of God together. And I believe God wants to network those people, not in an organizational, institutionalized structure, but at least bring all of these 7,000 together that they would know who they are and that they would be more deliberate in working and building together to take this thing forward. So listen, man, if you are out there listening to this program and you believe that you are numbered among the 7,000 others, give Tim Kutz a call and let's connect. And for real, we're not trying to make you a member of any organization. To be honest with you, I don't care about any member. Of any, I don't care about any organization. We need to connect and we need to build something out of sight that God could truly be honored with and that will give traction to the kingdom in a way that God could literally celebrate the accomplishment of his intents before Amen. we die and going forward. All right? Brother, that, that you don't know what you just said. Uh, I, I don't, we could go another three hours just on that. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm going to just stop it. I, you know, when you talk about the, the, the 7,000, I just did a whole series with Nehemiah. Oh, and I said, the thing that I, that that's, I, I emphasize that Nehemiah was not a heralded office. He was a cupbearer. That yeah. was that, that God was able to use to do what he did. And everybody who helped him build the wall were ordinary people. Right. So, you know, and that's who God is, is working through in this, in this season, the shaking man, when you touch that, you know, uh, the, the Hebrews 12, 25, the amount of shaking that's taking place in the political realm, the racial realm, the economic realm, and all of these areas uh, that's taking place. And then the, uh, the Lord said, not only will I shake earth, but I'll also shake heaven, mm -hmm. which means that the principalities and powers, that realm is mm -hmm. being uh, shaken. And what the Lord is showing me, he said, I said, how do you know that the heavens are being shaken? Because we can't, we, we can't gaze into that area in the natural and Lord said, by the response of men on the earth, because mm. the principalities and powers, rather than wrestling with them, they're, they're trying to coalesce with them and try to align with them, either in political or racial, whatever, some ideology. And we can go down that path all day, but uh, that's how you know that that's being shaken. Right. So you, uh, you're, 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 as uh, they, my, our friend in England would say, you're spot on. <laughs> right there, praise God. So, um, yeah, my friend, my friend. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Uh, so I really appreciate your time today, man. This has been. I enjoyed this conversation, man. I think I think it has been absolutely beneficial to me, uh, and I needed it too. So I, I just like this kind of free flow, ad lib kind of interaction, man. Right. <laughs> Structured kind of talk. I love this kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We didn't, we didn't come with a, a plan. I, I have a few notes here, but it was really just, hey, just, just go with it and see what the Lord is saying. Spontaneous ad lib conversation, and I found it to be absolutely refreshing to me. I, I, I enjoy this. I, th I thoroughly enjoy this. So thank you, man. Amen. Uh, you, thank you, you so much. Too. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, let's, you know, we're gonna release the people here at this point, but I just thank God for you, brother. I really do, and uh. uh the word that you spoke to me a while back uh, mm. is really, I'm beginning to see some things come to pass and I'll share some of those with you. Praise God. So Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, Beautiful. It's, it's a great thing. So thank you, Excellent. brother. Thank you. You're thank welcome. you. Thank You're welcome. You. And welcome. we will look forward to getting together soon and soon again. Wow. This has really been a great week of conversation. I have been really blessed by it really encouraged by it. And I pray that the same has been for you, that you've been and uh, blessed and encouraged and strengthened. Uh, I, I'm loving this new series, uh, Ecclesia Unscripted, and I'm looking forward to uh, more men and women of God from around the uh, nation and around the world to be on this broadcast, to share uh, from what's in their heart about what the Lord is doing 
in the earth today. Praise God. I uh, love the fact that uh, uh, Anderson is looking to build a prototype uh, of the local ecclesia. And, you know, that's what's in my heart also. Uh, and I'm not looking to be the big guy. You know, he mentioned the 7,000 who hadn't bowed to Baal. I'm just happy to be one of those 7,000. Praise God. And uh, I'd recently done that series on Nehemiah. Some of you may have heard that one. And remember, Nehemiah was just a, a basic cupbearer. And God used him to rebuild the wall with people who were just average, everyday people. And God used them. And this is what God is doing in the earth today. He's raising up individuals without title, raising up people without accolades, raising up people without fame, people who are hearing the voice of the Lord and are stepping out and doing what he said to do. And they're making a difference in the earth. Well, praise God. And I'm also looking forward to his books when they're coming out. So, uh, Anderson, if you're watching this today, uh, you know, we, we get those books out there because I believe you have a lot to say. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, God is working right now. He's doing a tremendous work. And I believe that Jesus is building his ecclesia and he's doing it with believers just like you. Praise God. I tell you what, I've really enjoyed this. Praise God. I'm Tim Kurtz, founder of the Ecclesia Center, and I've been excited to be a part of this this week and i pray that you have been ministered to as much as i have praise god father in the name of jesus thank you so much for what you're doing in the earth right now i thank you that you allowed us to be a part of what you are doing in the earth right now father in jesus name so father we just bless you we honor you we worship you and father we pray god that what has been released this week will be a blessing to your people in jesus name hallelujah amen I want to remind you to click on also the link uh that is in the description uh it'll take you to uh many of the episodes uh of good morning ecclesia that we've had uh in the past years and i think you'll be blessed by those and so uh listen click on that link and, and enjoy some of those previous videos because we've been doing this for almost five years now and and many of those are there so that you can go back and listen to some of them praise god thank you for being with us thank you for praying for us and above all remember this that god is still on the throne the devil is defeated and jesus is lord you be blessed